This week, we're touring Main Street. If you visited this Main Street in the late 1800s, it was probably bustling with wagons filled with cheese, ready to be shipped around America and Europe. This is Main Street, Little Falls. A Route 5 went right down Main Street of Little Falls in about the early 1970s. Uh, they moved May, uh, the Four Lane Highway became Route 5. You would see the original buildings. They did, some of them date back to the late 1890s. Main Street uh, changed uh, to one way in about the early 1970s when urban renewal came into Little Falls. 2011 will be an anniversary for Little Falls. It'll be the bicentennial. Uh, it was chartered in 1811, so I'm sure they're going to be doing some type of celebration there. There's a place in my memory where I drift back to now and then. It's been so long since I've touched the soil. When you're walking down Main Street here in Little Falls, be sure to drop into City Hall. You're immediately met with this incredible foyer. The building was made possible because of the Burl family. The Burls were cheesemakers who made Little Falls famous throughout the world for its cheese. Harry Burl was second generation, and he was the first in America to ship cheese to England. He then built a house uh, on the cliffs where he used to play, overlooking this beautiful valley. The home is now known as the Overlook Mansion. The plaque on the front of the building says it all. It says that the Burl family uh, built this beautiful city hall as a gift to the people of this community to be enjoyed for generations to come. And how true that is. Since as long as anyone can remember, Lovenheims has been a part of downtown Little Falls. Today, this company that dates back to the late 1800s is still open for business. To see well, I'm not sure of the exact year, but it was Ignaz Lovenheim. He came over from Europe, Hungary to be exact, um, and he started a number of dry goods stores from Amsterdam to Albany. This location, uh, Lovenheim's was originally um, on Albany Street for many, many years. And during the early 70s, when urban renewal came through, they were going to lose that building. So literally on a handshake, uh, Jerome Lovenheim had um, bought this building. Before he was able to move into it, he had passed away and his son Al finished the deal and renovated the existing building back in the early 70s. Mm -hmm. And they moved everything up from there up to this present location. Well, I literally came off a farm and I needed a job and the unemployment office said that Lovenheim's was hiring a sales clerk. And my first question was, what's Lovenheim's? <laughs> I didn't know what it was. Well, I came in and Al took me over to the old Neisner's, interviewed me and said I could start whenever I wanted. I said, well, I could start right now. <laughs> and he hired me and I've been here since 1983. I purchased the store back in 1997 from Mr. Lovenheim. And uh, it's been very good for my family. There's a bit of interesting historic trivia connected to this store. Back in the 1800s, a very young entrepreneur came to the owner, Ike, and asked for some money to start his own business. Well, Ike turned him down, so the young fellow went out on his own and got some money somewhere, and he opened up his own store. His name was F.W. Woolworth, and he went to Utica and opened the very first Woolworth in the United States. From back porch picking to the Stanley stage, if you listen, you can hear the music play. While you're strolling along Main Street here in Little Falls, you can drop into Foothills Photography and you come in here and warm up with a cup of coffee or a cup of hot chocolate. And in the gift shop, you can pick up one of the 2010 Little Falls calendars. It features the photography of the owner here and the photography is absolutely incredible. The photographer is Tom Pankow. 